Hello, good day and welcome back. So in this video, we're going to look at text template um, package. And this package is really cool because what it allows you to do is to combine some text, um, a template, and then combine the template with some data to render like, you know, more text, but the text is sort of augmented and sort of driven by the data. And if that doesn't make any sense to you, don't worry. But Later on, if you want to do web programming, this is going to come in very handy. So people who've done web programming understand the idea of templates and then having data drive the template. Um, for us, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can use this package to um, help us, you know, manipulate a large amount of data. It comes in very handy. For people who have um, word processing background, you might notice as something like mail merge, where you have a, a table of names and then you have a letter you want to send to everyone on, on that table. But instead of writing multiple letters, you write one letter and then you put placeholder for where you want people name and address and so on to show up. And then you just combine the table of names with this one template of what a letter, final letter should look like. And the program does the, you know, goes to each name, substitute it in, generate a, a letter and repeats and rinse and repeat. And so it simplifies things for you. So that's the big um, secret here, really, if there's anything such as a secret, is that you take a template, you combine it with data, and you get rendered text. That's the high level view of how you want to really see this. All right, more detail, um, more specifically, and of course, like I said, the, the benefit here is being able to generate a large amount of data that is driven by a large amount of text driven by data. And that's the flexibility also. Um, that's the benefit and the flexibility is that you can easily change the template uh, without having to change the program as driving it, as we're going to see in our example. Do remember that though, um, in the description below the video, there's a link to all the code online. And so by the time I post the video, if I don't post the code the same day, it's because I forget, but definitely the next day, the code is going to be there. You just click it and you can browse the code online for savvy. You can just install Git, and that's in the first video or second video on setting up for this series. And if you install Git, you can clone the code and have the code on your computer anytime. And uh, you just need to clone it once. Every time I push an update, you just say Git pull, and that brings down everything. If this sounds like gibberish to you, don't worry. Just browse it online. You can even download it from online. All right. So here's an example. So let's say I have a table. Uh, with some name. In this example, I only have one name, but you can imagine that how it just goes down a very long table. And this is what I was talking about just now. We have, you know, want to do a mail merge if you come from word processing background. And I have a table with a bunch of um, names, set of people, their names, their age and group, and maybe um, the team color or maybe the team name, whatever. And so I write a template and I was like, hello, so-and-so, um, you know, your age of whatever places you in group, blah. And then these are all placeholders. So the things I have in angle bracket, those are placeholders. So wherever you see angle bracket name, substitute it in with the current person name and angle bracket age for the current record, substitute it with age and so on. So um, when you see angle bracket group, again, substitute that with the group for the current record and you know, same thing with team color. And so the end result would be is that you have the result in green where you have hello uh, Sean Wise, your age of 37 places you in group A. Group A has been assigned to team color red. All right, so if we go now to the text package um, template documentation, there's some key things you should really pick up. Um, first of all, that you, you have to specify a structure. And if you're accessing things like a structure or a map, then you just use um, dot and the field name or the key name and dot is updated as it navigate that structure. The other things that you want to um, really focus on, you should definitely read the documentation is for us, we're going to use the new function from the um, template package to generate a new template. And the string there that you give is arbitrary, it's whatever name you want. And that's because you can have multiple template um, loaded at the same time and it allows you to select whichever one you want. The next one is parsing. This is the important one. This is the text that you're going to give it to say, oh, I want this to be combined with, this is your template text. I want this to be combined with data to produce the rendered or the resultant text. 
And the way you say I want it to render is you say execute the template that I have, which I've already parsed and combine it now with my data that I'm going to pass here. And remember data is a structure and write it out to this IO writer. So let's jump in and start taking a look at um, building an example. I'm going to start off with some simple code and I have a person structure and you see that up at the top. And then um, I'm going to write this function called get data and it's simply going to return a slice of pointer to person. So I'm going to speed through that. I end up with this. Um, nothing surprise here. I'm not going to try and explain this because you already know. All right. So after I have that, I can update my main program now so that I can start writing the template. So in this example, I have three constants, line one, two, and three, and those represent the template that I'm going to write. Now, I want to start off with stuff that we already know. So imagine that for my placeholder, I'm using percent %s because I'm going to use FMT, you know, FMT that print F to print out um, this message. And so if we run through that, we'll see um, that again, nothing um, that you don't know here, we're going to select one of our um, person, print it out and voila, nothing surprising, right? All right. So what happened now if we go back and we say, well, we want to loop over all the users we have in our database. What does that look like? Well, again, nothing that you don't know already. Um, you simply create a for loop and substitute the variables and yep, we get the expected result. So again, nothing too surprising here. So here you see, I created a new template and I said, I want to parse the message that represent my template on line 27. That is not really a template. That's just some arbitrary name. Then I'm in my loop. I'm going to execute my template. This is when I combine my template with the data and spit it out on some IO writer. So when you run that, you're going to see that the output doesn't look any different than what um, we've produced when we just write it out with F printf. The only difference is that right now um, our template doesn't use percent s and percent d to substitute in the values that's because it needs to know from that struct where exactly to put those values so that's why when we run it we just see um you know the actual string that we 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 we, we put um our template without the data so let's go back and then start substituting now um some fields from our um struct that we want to be replacing the template so you use this double um curly braces, and then whatever expression you want inside. So now we can go back and write a, not a template, which we're going to write as a file. And this is to show that our template doesn't have to be a string of text in our application only. We can certainly make it um, uh, external as a file. And the advantage of that is that once you compile our program, we could change the template once we know what kind of data is going to be available and things are going to work just fine. And we're going to see that towards the end. So let's rerun now our, let's update our program now to open a file to basically parse the templates from a file instead of a string. And the template library already, well, template package already give us a function. Instead of just parse, it's template that parse files. You could give it many files to parse, but we only have one file, so we can give it one file name. But now when we parse that and update our code, Parse it and rerun. Now you see the result, and so you can imagine now that we have this table or database with users, and we want to send each one a welcome letter. We can just sit in a loop, apply our template to um, each user record, and then write the output instead of standard out to a file, a different file name, of course or to an email or something like that. So again, very straightforward, I think, so far. Literally like three lines to use text template. Okay, so I wanna be a little bit more ambitious. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create HTML template now. So I'm gonna create this file, members.tmpl. Well, actually, I'm gonna call it members.html. But, and so it's gonna write out an HTML file. And so what you can imagine is that we wanna put maybe a news flyer or something like that listing all the members in our club. And of course, all you want to do is probably just list a table listing 
name and maybe the team they belong to. This is what the most important part of that HTML template would look like. Um, so I start out with actual HTML file and then I'm gonna decide or determine which parts are variable, which parts are dynamic. And that would be information about a person. And of course here, information about, I'm telling you the total number of people on the team. So once I have that now, now I can go back and I can create a struct that will allow me to pass the information for this template is a slice of person. If I need to pass any additional information on like the date the template was created or maybe the title, if I wanted to make that dynamic for whatever reason or any other information, I would put it in the struct. I'm gonna put everything that we we're doing with a welcome letter template in its own function. So that's enclosed and we don't have any dependency outside of that function. Then I'm gonna create another function in which um, I'm going to use to generate the member list um, template. So we have two templates here, right? The one that generates a welcome file to each member, and then now the one that generates a table showing the list of people on our team. And as you can see, it's very straightforward. Um, on line 27 there, all I'm doing is creating the template, parsing it from the files, members.html, but that must function. Basically, it takes two parameters, the template and an error. And all it's doing is to check for us to see that if there was an error parsed in this template, then it's just um, does a panic and or program exit. And that's because in this case, I want to make sure that that template compiles. And if there's an error compiling it, then um, essentially I want this program to fail. Okay. And the must just take care of that old logic we would have done anyway to say that this must compile. The rest is very easy. We get some data, create a page object with it, then we create an output file, execute the template using that output file on our templates to write the result to that output file. Then we close the file and we're done. The next thing we're going to be doing is using our mem page object to pass to the template. So we know we can, those fields are available to us. First thing we want to do when we update our template is calculate the number of members. So we're going to use the length function. And if we go back to the documentation, we can see that right here that we can just, you know, calculate the length of. So that would be on our members um, slice that is part of our page template. The next thing we want to do is identify which part of our template is dynamic. And like we said, it's this part that, you know, writes a row in our HTML table. And so I'm going to enclose it in a range. And if we go back to the documentation, it um, shows you that oh, is this range with a pipeline, which is your expression. And T1 there is the templates that's been included. And there are different ways you can write range. You can even have variables assigned, um, just like what we'd use inside of Go, we'll have the index, the key, and the value. But here, we know that available to us inside of our template is the dot, D-O-T, dot operator that allows, that refers to that current element in our um, range expression. So that's the current person. So therefore, since that represents that person, then we can say that name and that team. And there you go. So after we fix some bugs in our code, um, just because we move around some code, so we introduce some bugs. Anyway, after we fix that and we run it, we'll see that we create this file called membership.list.html. And if you right click on that file name in your editor and then paste it in a browser, um, this is what you get. I did some styling and so on, but that's not important. You can do anything you want. Then if we go back and just add another user to our data set, notice how our table, once we run the program, it just adjusts because that's the dynamic part of the data. And then of course we can go clean up our template and remove some of the placeholder data that we had in there. And of course we can change just about anything we want. If we wanted to change anything in terms of adding another column, um, whatever it is. But you've seen the power now of being able to use templates in this way. And there is a HTML slash template package specifically for working with HTML. And that does a little bit more in terms of it knows what is valid HTML in terms of what characters can be escaped or should be escaped. But notice we use the text template and the HTML template package is built on the text template package. And we're able to still generate HTML. All right. Um, thanks. I know this video is a little bit long, 15 minutes long, but hopefully it's kind of illustrates and shows you how to use a template package and you can add to your tool belt or toolbox of skills from old programming language and the standard packages.
Thanks for watching. Great having you spend your time with me. I do appreciate it. Uh, hit the thumbs up button. Definitely hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet. Um, keep spreading the word. And see you in the next video. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.